Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we discuss day-to-day -day problems people face in their lives. Let's start with the video. I thought I'd give a bit of context before getting to the heart of the matter. So me, 23 female, and my now ex-fiancé, 27 male, dated for almost six years. We met back when I was still in college. At that time, he used to work as a bartender at some local pub my friends and I would meet at on the weekends. I didn't instantly fall for him. I mean, he wasn't especially stunning, but he had that kind and genuine smile, always spread across his face. And each time I went to that pub for a drink, he'd offer me one on the house. At first, I thought it was something he did to everyone he found sympathetic. But after a while, I realized that I was the only one he'd show these kind gestures out of all of my friend group. After months of seeing each other every Friday night, he eventually asked me out, and for once, I thought I'd give it a shot. To be honest, I didn't receive much male attention during my teen years, and I eventually got used to it. So much that I literally stopped dating during my junior year up until now. This lack of interaction with the opposite gender made me somewhat love and touch deprived. So, seeing that a nice guy such as him was actively trying to get my attention made my heart tingle. We started going out that week, and it was refreshing to say the least. Our meetings were very casual. It felt natural. It really felt natural with him, not forced at all. He'd always ask me what kind of activities I'd enjoy doing, and we soon realized that we had a lot in common. We kept seeing each other for more than three months before I started to acknowledge the fact that I had developed feelings for him. And judging by how he treated me, I assumed the feelings were reciprocated. At that moment, and since my friends already approved of him, I figured out it was high time for me to show him to my family. Speaking of my family, I forgot to mention that I had a sister that was two years younger than me. We got along pretty well, I'd say, despite how different we both are. While I was the grunge, angsty teen that nobody really noticed, she, on the other hand, was the pretty and feminine cheerleader that everyone wanted to be friends with. So back to what I was saying. I had decided to tell my mom one night, while we were watching a movie in my room, if I could bring my boyfriend over for them to meet him. And she was surprisingly delighted. She told me that after all these years of me staying single, she concluded that I was probably into girls and thus hiding my partners from her. She had a hard time believing someone my age could stay single for so long. After agreeing upon a day and time to invite him over to our place, my mom started asking me all sorts of questions about him. What was he like? How old was he? What did he do for a living? Did he consider starting a family? I had to slow her down a little, otherwise this conversation would have gotten out of hand. My sister, who overheard our little chat, entered the room, sat across from the bed facing us, and innocently joined the conversation. The meeting was a success, and it's safe to say that my parents adored him. He was kind, polite, and very charming. My sister, who usually quickly loses interest in family gatherings, decided to stay until the very last minute that day. Her eyes were taped on my boyfriend during the whole duration of our dinner. After being officially in a relationship with each other for a year and seeing how things were going very well between us, my boyfriend took the initiative to propose to me. It was a very emotional day for me. I never thought someone like me would get the privilege of experiencing true love, let alone have this love be concluded with an engagement. So I agreed, tears and snot rolling all over my face. My fiancé would always come around the house during our engagement period to spend time with my family and me. Of course, he was always welcome, a bit too much sometimes. My sister developed a very particular interest in him. Spending time alone with him became mission impossible, as she would always be around us. She would also often prepare food for him, something she never does actually since she despises cooking, and that alone should have been enough to alert me that something was wrong. She started to dress more and more inappropriately when he was around her. It varied from plunging necklines to really, really short skirts and outrageously high heels. Trust me when I say I'm not acting like the bitter, insecure, and plain-looking sister. I knew my sister well enough to realize when she was overdoing it. Then things got a little bit more complicated. 
I started to notice how my fiance's eyes would linger on her cleavage a bit too long for comfort and how she gave him a smile in return as if telling him it was okay to stare. I also observed the way he'd lean on her every time she made a joke or how he'd drape his hand around her waist when she was standing next to him. But hey, she was my sister and he was the love of my life. I had to trust them. Maybe I was just being paranoid and them getting along so well should make me happy. During one of our nights out with just me and my fiance, I couldn't help but see how his phone screen would light up with each notification he received. He was literally being bombarded with messages and they just kept on coming. My curiosity got the best of me. So I and so I waited until he got to the restroom to check his phone. He had a password on, but we could still read the messages sent to him from the notification bar. And so I thought I'd finally get this out of my mind. As I read those messages, I felt my throat dry up and my stomach fall to the ground. Not only was he receiving extremely explicit and suggestive messages, but the person sending them was no other than my very own little sister. I put his phone right back in its place before he got back to our table and did my best to hide my emotions. I was on the verge of crying and my face was flushed red from anger. He saw that I didn't touch the food we were served and I told him I just felt sick suddenly. I didn't want to react right away, knowing my fiancé, he'd probably deny my claims. So I had to gather evidence. I contacted a college friend of mine who I knew could hack Instagram accounts and asked for his help. After getting his password, I logged in and took screenshots of every messages exchanged between them. I cried a lot that night. I finally confronted him with enough proof at my disposal. But what he said to me did nothing to calm my anger. He just said he couldn't help himself since my sister was hot and that she was basically throwing herself on him. Of course, I'm not a stupid woman and as much as it did break my heart, I had to break off our engagement. I blocked him from every social media I had, changed my phone number and swore I'd never go near him ever again. But as usual, life doesn't go as planned and in this case, it decided to play a very dirty trick on me. I was minding my business when my mom knocked on my door. I told her to get in and I saw her looking perplexed as she did. She sat down with me and managed to say to me with a straight face that my sister and my ex-fiancé were getting married. I asked if she was joking because it was a really distasteful joke, but she kept on staring at me in all seriousness. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. I somehow kept my calm and told her that I was happy for them but that my sister shouldn't expect to see me at her wedding. It was natural after all she did to me. But my mother was not having it. She said that if I dared not to attend my sister's wedding, she'll modify her will, and my share of inheritance would go directly to her. At this point, I was furious. I told her that she was insane to even consider saying this to me and how cruel and inconsiderate she was now. I then left the house and asked a friend of mine if I could stay at her place until things got back to normal. Not the a-hole. I'm so sorry to say this, or maybe not so much, but your sister is a bitch, and I hope he does to her what he did to you. I hope he'll cheat on her so much that he'll break the Guinness record of the most cheated on woman on the planet. Not the a-hole. Okay. Seriously, this is messed up. I can't even imagine how heartbroken you are. You lost both, your man and your sister at the same time. But you know what? Good riddance. The less people like this you have in your life, the better you will feel. Not the a-hole. Jesus Christ, your sister has no fucking shame. How could she even look at you and live under the same roof as you while flirting with your fiancé? Not to mention your mom, who apparently found the situation normal I wish you good luck and hope you find someone else soon. Next story. Last year, I noticed that my daughter, 13, doesn't do much physical exercise. In fact, her only real activity is for around 40 minutes a week in PE at her school. The bus stop is about five minutes away and it takes her right in front of her school gates, so it's not like she walks every day. I told her she needed to get exercise and suggested joining a football or a basketball club. She told me she hates team sports. Fine, so how about the gym? No, she said that's boring. 
So we went on like this, trying activities she could get stuck into until just before Christmas, we got her put into a boxing class three times a week. Now, in January, I had to go back to my home country for two weeks as my father died. I got back on Friday night and on Saturday morning, I get up and tell her to get ready because I'll take her to boxing. And she and my wife tell me that my daughter stopped because the class made her out of breath and she was struggling to keep up and she didn't like sweating and that after a workout, she felt sore the next day. Now, in my view, that's BS. Naturally, as you keep going with the class, your fitness will increase and you won't be as out of breath. And before you ask, she does not have asthma. She never did as a child and didn't in September when we went for a checkup. As for this wedding, just shower afterward. I told her that at this point I was putting my foot down and that she had to commit to some kind of regular exercise three times 60 minutes a week minimum or that we'd have to start to restrict some of her privileges. She came back saying I never got on her older brother's back about exercising but the truth is I never had to. He does football and rugby in the winter and cricket and cross country in the summer so he gets a lot of exercise. Finally, I want to stress this isn't all about her weight or appearance, and I've not said anything about that to her. For me, it's about teaching her the skills to stay healthy as she gets older. My dad taught me, and when I look at others my age, 50, so many of them are very out of shape to the extent that carrying some groceries in or even sitting on the floor and getting up is hard work. You're the a-hole for continuing to push in a way that obviously isn't working. You're going to make her loathe exercise if you keep this up. My son is not very active, so I signed up for a mixed martial arts class with him and told him I needed a buddy and asked him if he'd do it with me. He loves doing it with me even though he's not very good at it because he's learning something new with me. I also play Dance Dance Revolution. He now wants to do it constantly with me. You should have been looking for ways you could do things for bonding, but instead, you're making it a point of contempt. The more you force your daughter to exercise, the more she's going to hate it and resent you for making her do it. You might do better to find an activity you can do together, such as hiking, bike riding, rollerblading, etc. She's more likely to stick with it if she enjoys it. Plus, it's a great opportunity for the two of you to have quality time together. Soft, you're the a-hole. You mean well, but bullying her into exercise can be counterproductive. She'll resent you and just stop when she's 18. A short jog a few days a week can be very beneficial. Doesn't have to be fast, just get the heart pumping for a while. I never liked sports myself, but just a jog or a good walk I found to be helpful. Next story. My wife Jenna is seven months pregnant, by the way. On Friday, we went to my friend Ariel's house for a small barbecue. Manny is Ariel's husband. Me and Manny can have a conversation, but I wouldn't necessarily say we're friends since we only know each other because he's married to my friend. I've noticed sometimes he's had a habit of comparing our relationships, and I know this has to do with the fact that me and Ariel dated for a few months almost eight years ago in high school. If we talk about a simple date night sometimes, he cuts in talking about an even nicer thing they did or something of that sort. Or if we talk about pointless disagreements we've had, he brings up that he and Ariel never have issues like that. That's just something I've picked up on a few times. Soon as we're there, he's offering drinks, asking everyone else what kind of beer they want. But when he gets to me, he asks if I want a soda. He acted surprised when I preferred a beer. Then he brought up Jenna being pregnant and we were both confused about that. Manny said he just thought I wouldn't drink since Jenna can't. But Jenna never even drank before she was pregnant anyways. She doesn't like beer or wine. An hour in, I take another beer out of the cooler. He asks if that's a good idea. Why wouldn't it be? We got a ride with another friend who isn't drinking, so it wasn't like I'd be driving home. And it's a second beer. He was only doing this with me. Got a third almost an hour later. He tells Jenna to let him know if he needs to lock me out of the cooler now. We both again ask what he means. Manny thinks Jenna's being too nice with me already having one beer, while she can't have any since she's growing my child. How he said, and he just thought I'd be happy with one. Again, neither of us understood what the big deal was. I'm not trying to get drunk, 
Jenna isn't sacrificing anything by not drinking while pregnant because she never did before. Sure, thinks she can't eat, I won't eat either, because I know she misses it, but alcohol was never a big deal to us. When we told him, he said, well, when we were pregnant, I never drank because we should be making sacrifices just like they are for us. And I told him, it's good for you. We're happy with how we are now, and I don't understand why you need to be weird paying too much attention to me drinking. After telling him that, he got pretty red. This was all said in the kitchen, by the way. So the conversation was only between the three of us, but he wasn't talking much with the group either anymore. Then Ariel called me after because he told her I called home weird when he only meant to express his concern for Jenna. I explained how it all went down, but both still think I'm an a-hole because I didn't need to call him weird over something like that. Normally, I don't resort to name calling. But for me, it was weird, so I called out his behavior as weird. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If your wife was offended by your drinking, it's up to her to say something, not Manny. You dropped hints for him to butt out, and he didn't take them. So a direct approach was the only thing to get him to stop. I'm getting the distinct impression that Manny doesn't like you, and it's probably 100% to do with the fact that his wife is still friends with someone she dated before him. This was him displaying his dominance in his territory. Definitely not the a-hole. If he really felt the need to make the first comment about it, not his business, but fine. After he learned the deal, though, he should have dropped it. Also, I get the whole, I'll give it up since you have to, but I typically hear that with food, not drinking, at least among my many friends who've had kids. Hell, most of my friends look like the guy has a nine-month designated driver, but after he better be prepared to be the driver for a long ice time. Not the a-hole. The guy is out of order for what he's been saying, for the constant comparison and what seems to be a competition to him. I tell Anna that you won't be going over there until after the pregnancy. Still, talk to her over the phone, FaceTime, Zoom, etc. But it's best that you and Manny avoid each other due to his behavior just until the baby is born.